Hi everybody, this is Nikki Jameson here and I'm here with another video in Rebel Pro 5 where we're going to explore some more brushes. So today we're going to explore some of the brushes in the oil and acrylic brushes section of Rebel Pro 5. And I would encourage you to look at my previous videos where we looked at the knives, we looked at the flats in oils and acrylic brushes and we looked at the watercolour brushes. Okay, we have already looked at the watercolour brushes as well. So do take some time to check out those videos just to see what Rebel can actually do in terms of brushes. So just before I uh, started this video, I was playing with some of the, uh, the, the, the brushes here. I have used these round brushes as backgrounds and in my previous video where I um, I did one on the texture brushes it was really interesting to see what the the round brushes can do so these are very oily they're very oily brushes and they're great for actually setting up backgrounds but they are good for a wide range of other paintings and abstracts as well so I thought it would be a good idea for us to have a look at them so if you haven't got Rebel 5 Pro already, you can download a trial version. I'm not sort of advertising for them. I just like the program. It's one of the ones I'm continually looking at and exploring along with uh, my other program, Coral Painter. And uh, I'm exploring these for my own benefit as well because I really do like to see what these brushes do so that when I use them in my paintings, I know what they do and I don't have to do too much experimentation. And uh, any experimentation exploration so what takes I have done time. Here, I have chosen a canvas and I've put a layer above that canvas. So as I do in all my videos, I will um, direct you to go into Rebel Pro 5. You can, um, 5 Pro rather, you can choose from a range of canvas. I have actually, some canvases come with the program, but I've actually bought a number of papers and canvases, which I'll be playing with a lot later. So you can pick a canvas. You, I've chosen in this case, uh, since we're doing mostly oily work, uh, CA09, but there are lots of other canvases you can either purchase or which come with the program that you can play with. You can also pick a canvas color. Uh, so it doesn't have to be this canvas. You can use a default color or you can pick that color, the color that you wish. So what I'm gonna do on this layer two is that I am going to pick a brush this is a uh, linear and I'm going to make sure the brush is on paint and I'm just going to make a background, not that color. I don't think we're going to use purple today. I want to choose a non intrusive background. So I'm just going to put down some paint. This is actually quite a fun, the fun part of it. I've made the brush, the brush fairly big and this is really just filling the canvas with paint. There are lots of ways to create a background. You can use a pre-prepared background or a texture. You can use um, something to fill the canvas, which will fill it with the, the color, or you can, you can paint. Let's just add some more. Ooh, not that one. I'm trying to look for a little bit of a variation. I'm not succeeding. Great start, Nikki, great start. But anyway, I'm just going to put down this canvas. And in fact, I think the bottom should be a little bit, maybe a bit darker, just in case we want to do something landscapey. So here I have it on paint. And now what I'm going to do is put it on paint and blend to try and just blend this in a little bit. Okay, so we have something a little bit, I'm going to sample this brown make it a little bit cohesive. Let's go to this round soft. Make sure it's on paint and blend. And really you can just have fun doing this. Some brushes work better than others. The paper will have obviously an effect. And if you are painting something that's non-representational, you can use this as your base. If you're painting, painting something that's more realistic, you can also obviously be guided by the um, painting that you're attempting to do. So I'm gonna use the round soft here. 
so I want this a little bit more a little flatter so you could just take the time to play with these okay so we have this is our background layer it looks fairly okay looks nice and smooth and I prefer doing this in painting on the canvas layers it's it's just a preference you don't have to there are lots of ways you can utilize the flexibility of layers for your for your painting uh, and we can go into that in another video this is really just to show the uh, the the brushes so in this case I'm going to actually add another layer and then we're going to explore some of these brushes so I'm going to put this back on paint I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to we're on the oils here which means these um, colors should more or less go together but these are colors I've used previously but I'm going to just experiment uh, with these round brushes to see what they do. So here we have uh, paint. I'm going to turn on my pigment mixer because if I want to mix colors, it will enable me to mix them quite naturally. So this is called linear. It's a round thing, what happens when we blend it. So if we blend it, we get something a little bit more interesting. So if you are blending like types of color and you want to blend like uh, tonal um, you know values and soften edges this is a good brush okay let's go to round so round soft let's get another color here round soft I'm going to make it a bit smaller put it just on paint starts off a little bit sort of similar uh, line smoothing let's do this I want to try and get it to its defaults. So this is a very soft brush. Uh, it's very oily in its current setting. I'm going to take the oiliness down a little bit. And if I take the oiliness down, it makes it a little bit drier. Let's go with this. Just put in this orange in it, and then I'm going to blend. And I love how it actually blends. So this background, um, even though I'm painting on a different layer, it's actually blending through the layers as well, which is very interesting. Okay, let's go with something a little bit more. Let's go to the round soft. And you can always go to paint and mix to try and mix some of these things. But round soft is a bit big. Is a, it's like a soft round brush and if you were using, if you were doing things like masking, this would be kind of like a go-to brush. I like this. This is really nice and it interacts very nicely with the paper. I always say with these brushes, it's very, very good to experiment a lot with them. Okay. To see exactly what they do with the paper and with all the different settings. So this is just on paint. If I do paint and mix, it's going to mix these colors in. If I make it a smaller, a much smaller brush, yet again, you can get something different here. Okay. Just using these colors just to show how different the brushes um, can show up as and if I blend if I want to blend that and I like to make them fairly big for blending it's gonna give you a nice blended effect I'm not sure what you would you know call this but you get the idea and depending on how hard that's a hard press that is a softer press. Okay, you can get something very, very interesting through all this. Okay, so that is round soft, round hard. As I say, you can, you can, let's put this back on just paint. Round hard is more of a bristly brush and it's just its default. 
um, if you want to mix it you could put the paint down and then you could blend those colors because it's got pigment mixing on it's make um, blue and yellow is making green okay but lots and lots of uh, possibilities with these brushes Just really just making marks here okay right uh, that was round hard round hard 2 um, let's see what round hard 2 does so round hard 2 starts out I always find these brushes start a little bit nondescript um, and it's just on paint there it's a fairly basic brush it looks like with some bristle but if I put it on paint and mix it will probably do some mixing if I put it on paint on paint and blend it will start to blend these in okay um, I'm gonna put it back on paint and we're gonna go to round hard three let's pick some different colors here oh Ooh. Now this is interesting. Round hard three. It loads very quickly in its default. Let's tone that down a little bit with some white. That's quite bright, right? Wow, that's uh you just never know what these brushes are gonna do. So that's a really interesting one. Uh that's called round hard three. And if I take in, you know, some of the this paint here I can mix it in because I'm using paint and blend and likewise I can mix it that way as well okay it's very interesting um, going to rough dry now and I'm, I'm conscious of time so I feel like I'm rushing these and I don't really want to do that so I want to actually explore some of these brushes but you know with these limitations it's not ever going to do the this justice this can just introduce the brushes to you you can play around and get some idea of what they do so that you can know how to use them in paintings that you do okay so this is rough dry if you reduce the oiliness it will interact more with the paper and less paint if you reduce the loading even more so and the paper will come through and that is the case for all the brushes not just not just this one and it's, so if you like a more um, a, a drier brush definitely experiment with reducing the loading and reducing the oiliness of these brushes okay so rough oily let's go right down here rough oily is a bristly brush very nice bristly, bristly brush it was on paint and mix there with paint it this this brush builds you can see it adding paint here which is inc quite incredible really so it's it's building it up in the actual strokes look at that it's very very luscious so got a high oiliness here let's take that down a little bit see what we get so we get much less paint imparted here let's just sample this for a very very different um, sample that so you can get some nice uh, brush marks it's all in the experimentation I mean it's it's great to, it's great to sort of go and start painting but to me I really kind of enjoy this aspect of 
finding out how these digital tools work. I don't know why it's gone onto that colour, but here we go. I really love to mix some of these colours, see what they can do. It's great, great stuff there. All right, so that is rough oily. Uh, if I did, and I wasn't even blending it there. If I was to blend this, this is what I would do. You could make the brush bigger and get something even more interesting and abstract, of course. And it really enables you to play with color and just see what this is can do. You know, great starting points or end points, whatever you want to do. All right, uh, fast fat brittle bristle, fat bristle. So this is a brush I really like. This is the brush that actually I thought, oh, I, I really wanted to explore this brush. It is a, it acts like a thick paint brush. I'm going to increase the size a little bit so you can see. And it puts the paint down and it also kind of leaves a trail off. So if you're into thick paint brushes, this is a very nice brush. And I know I'm being boring with these colors because I can't, I didn't sort of, pick my color palettes as well but look at how this just on paint you know can put down real thick paint if I increase the oiliness you'll see that it, it kind of leaves leaves little splotches on, on, on the paper for you this is all on one layer still Okay. All right, and if I was to blend, sample this. I wasn't, I didn't actually, I didn't actually obey my commands there. But if I was to blend, I stroke upwards to blend that in. There is a, there is a knack to it, which means as with most digital things, you have to practice. I would recommend you practice. Don't be afraid of messing things up because that is how you learn what these brushes, these tools do. Okay, I love this brush already. I really do love it. If I'm to mix it, it will mix that paint. If I reduce the oiliness, I get an even more pronounced stroke. Okay. You can see it better there. Perhaps people can't always see green, so this is what it's doing. It, it leaves a really textury stroke, I have to say here. Very nice and textury. Lovely brush. Beautiful. So that is flat bristle. Um, play around with that. And he last but, but not least is hairy. Let's go for something bright. So hairy, let's just put the paint down for a bit, is very bristly. It is a bristly brush. If I reduce the loading, it, you will see the paper come through a little bit more. Okay, if I increase the loading, it will obviously load more paint. It is actually mixing or bringing in, because it's got this yellow here, it's actually bringing that yellow in, which is interesting because I don't really have this on dirty brush, so I'm not sure why that's doing that but it's very interesting to see okay and uh, I wanted a, a lighter blue 
So I'm making this really messy here, but you can just see what this one is doing. And if I blend, I can get some fantastic, and blend and make it bigger. Let's try that. This is what I can get. So I put it on blend and I've made the brush bigger or larger. And it is using the bristles or, you know, what I've got below it and creating, you know, more pronounced strokes and bristles, which is really wonderful. I really like these. I, I think I like the last five or so brushes um, best out of this, this group. Okay, this has been a slightly longer uh, uh, video, but I hope you get the idea of these brushes. As I say, they really need to be played with and experimented with um, and really just use and keep using them and you'll always explore and find something new. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.